Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may and wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Winter time is probably the best time of the year for star watching. It gets dark early and on cold, frosty winter nights, the stars seem to fill the sky with points of brilliant light. I always think that stars seem to shine brighter in the winter time. We're very fortunate to live in the west of Ireland where there's less light pollution. Somewhere I've got a map of the world at night from space. You can make out all the shapes of the countries from all the light shining, but our part of Ireland is not nearly so bright. Oh, we are so lucky to still have dark skies. Since humans have been on Earth, people have always looked up at the night sky in wonder and wondered what the stars were. It was hard to imagine what they could be. When I was a very small child, I thought that the night sky must be a great black cloth with little holes that let sunlight through. But there have been stranger ideas than that. People have thought they might be scary animal eyes glinting from afar in a great hunt, or maybe flaming campfire lights of the star people, why they were hunting across the sky so far away. Star watchers, astronomers, began to understand that stars swept across the sky in ever-changing patterns. Yet the patterns would return, repeating in cycles, and they began to imagine that these patterns, these constellations, might be heroes or people with great stories who could be remembered in the stars. There's a really fun word for turning story characters into stars. These heroes are catasterized. That, that's a word you can show off with. Now I've got a constellation here. Um, this one is Orion. You might recognize the star pattern. You can see it in the night sky, particularly the winter sky, and you can always recognize his star belt, his sword belt. They're very easy to see. Orion was a famous hunter. And the story tells that he was turned into stars. And if you, any of you have ever seen the film Dragonheart, you will know that at the end of the film, the dragon takes his place in the stars and becomes the constellation Draco, although there are other stories about that. Now, astronomers and astrophysicists know a lot more about stars. They can explain that they are suns, just like ours, but millions of miles away, light years away. Many of them will have solar systems of planets of their own, perhaps just like ours, rolling around them. And those stars that make up constellations like Orion or Draco are millions of miles away from each other. We imagine those patterns. Yes, we know much more about stars nowadays, but there is still much more that we don't know. Stars are a mystery. Stars are a puzzle. But they're still beautiful and inspiring to see. And this gives me an idea. If stars are such a puzzle, why, not, why don't we create a special star puzzle poem? It's intriguing and fun. And it will get you thinking about stars and working with words as well. So come with me and I'll show you what I mean. We might say, stars are like diamond daisies on a velvet cloak. That comparison is called a simile. You could leave out the word like and just say, the stars are diamond daisies. That's called a metaphor. I think it sounds better. But what do you think? A lot of poetry talks about stars using metaphors and picture language like that. One of my favourite poets imagined he was looking up at a distant view of nighttime cities. He wrote, Look at the stars. Look up at the skies. Oh, look at all the fire folk sitting in the air, the bright boroughs, the circle citadels there. Now, he had a great imagination. He was writing almost a hundred years before satellite cameras could take pictures of Earth from space. Just like the photo you are looking at now. And oh yes, if you look at the map, can you see how dim light from the west of Ireland is? 
We are lucky to see the stars so brightly on fine nights. There is a Native American poem that uses metaphor images to describe the way the stars move across the skies. It goes, We are the birds of fire, we fly across the heavens. We are the birds of fire, we sing with our light. I love the way that this poem uses those powerful, beautiful birds winging through the sky as a way of describing stars. It feels right somehow. We could use this idea to help us get on with our puzzle poem. So let's get started. Okay, have a look at this star shape. It has three double-pointed arrow shapes and a circle at the centre. This gives us three lines for our star poem, one line for each of the arrow rays. To get us started, I've chosen a version of one of the lines of the Native American poem. We are the birds of fire who sing with light. Have a good look at this line. Count the letters in the sentence and then see if you can identify the middle letter. That letter will be the one that goes in the central circle. Pause the video until you are ready to go on. How many letters are there in the sentence and find the one that is in the middle? When you are ready, start the video again. Let's have a think about the second line. It has to have 35 letters again and the middle letter must still be an R. Oh, we could think a bit more about the way that the stars look like birds of fire. Oh, we could describe them a bit more. Perhaps it is their eyes that glow brightly. Perhaps the eyes glow and glimmer glitter or shimmer. Any of those words might be useful. Let's try starting with our eyes shimmer brightly. Hmm, too long. Each half of the line can only be 16 letters and our eyes shimmer brightly has 22. And the 16th letter is an R, not the 17th, so it won't work. No, how about our eyes shimmer brighter? That would work, and the 17th letter is R. It does work. Now we just have to finish the line. It could go on, we shimmer brighter than... There are 11 letters left to finish off the line. Could you finish it? Pause the video to give you time to try out your line. And when you're ready, start the video again. Well, what did you choose for your second line? I decided that I wanted to make my firebirds sound powerful and a bit fierce. So I chose an eagle as an image. A glare is a fierce, strong expression. So I thought it might be a good word to select. I did have to find a word with five letters. Just one more line to go. We know that our line must have 35 letters, 16 in each half with the letter R in the middle. You may have noticed that it helps if you have chosen the central word, the one with the R in it, fairly early on. We already had the R in fire for the first line. In line two, we changed brightly to brighter, to help to find the middle word. Perhaps in line three, we might think about these stars, these birds of fire, a bit more. We might wonder why they are there and why their sparkling eyes are watching. Now, this gives me an idea. Go and pause the video and see if you can write a third line. And when you're ready, I will show you what I chose as well. Pause the video while you work out your third line. And when you're ready, start the video again. And now we have the whole poem. You can see what I chose for my last line. The poem reads, 
We are the birds of fire who sing with light. We shimmer brighter than an eagle glare. We are watching over the sleeping world. Well, what do you think? I'm sure you could have done better. So, that is how to make a star puzzle poem. One, create a short sentence using an image that describes the way you look at the stars. Two, count the letters in the sentence and find the letter nearest to the middle. Three, write in your first line with the middle letter in the central circle. Four, create a second line describing stars a bit more. There must be the same number of letters in each line and the central letter must be the same each time as well. Five, create a third line describing how the stars make you feel. Again, there must be the same number of letters each line and the central letter must still be the same as well. Six, you could draw or paint a night skyscape and then cut out your star-shaped poem and stick it onto the starry background. And here is something else you can try. Find out about some star stories, those constellations of stars that made up tales of ancient heroes and mythical creatures. Perhaps you could create some new stories. Which modern hero would you choose to join the star patterns? Who would you, do you remember the word, who would you catastrophize? I've uh, arranged for some materials for you to download to help you with ideas. They're all about star patterns and constellations. Everyone loves stars. They remind us of Christmas, birthdays, celebrations and magic of all kind. So your star puzzle poem does not have to be about the night sky. Stars could give you a lot of ideas. Have a go. Be imaginative. Be creative. Have fun. And don't forget, send your poems to Longford Library. I really would love to read them as well. So goodbye for now and I hope we'll catch up again before long.